By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are looking at a second round match of the Raging Bull series, the new old school tournament held in Amsterdam. And we are looking at an international match. On the left we have Leo from Switzerland and he's playing Florian from Germany. And before we go into the match, I would first like to briefly discuss these decks. Let's first take a look at Leo's deck. So his deck is named Animate Robots and his most important card is Triskelion. He's playing with four Triskelion. And Triskelion is, uh, you pay six mana and you get a 1-1, one, one, exactly a 1-1. One, one. But the 1-1 one, one has three plus one plus one counters that are on there. And you can take each of them off to deal one damage to any target. And this is a, a very strong card and it's, it's the most played artifact creature in old school and you'll you'll see it around in a lot of games also on the channel in a lot of decks and he plays this in combination with a copy artifact so the copy artifact is blue and one and you can copy any artifact now obviously Triskelion is a great choice but Leo also has other choices for instance the Mishra's factory because if you copy if you animate a factory worker it turns into a 2-2 artifact creature and you can then copy it with your copy artifact and that means that for one copy artifact you get an extra land an extra creature and it's also a pump spell because Mishra's factories can pump themselves but also each other so that's another great option uh, for Leo he also plays with animate debt hence the name Animate Robots. Now Triskelion is one of the most loved artifact creatures but also hated so there's a lot of artifact removal in most decks and also there's a Swords to Plowsier. So when people play a Swords to Plowsier over the Triskelion it can remove it from the game completely. Now what Triskelion can do and this is pretty unique it can actually kill itself because his plus one plus one counters can be targeted at any target including himself. So he can kill himself and Leo can then use the Animate Dead to bring it back to life. So basically these three cards have great synergy together, or four cards I should say, because I also mentioned the uh, Mishra's factory. So these four cards have great synergy, and there are a lot more tricks in Leo's deck, um, but I think this is kind of the, the core of the deck, and by understanding this you will prob probably understand more of his deck and of the game that we're about to watch. So now let's take a look at Florian's deck. So he's playing with a deck called Disco Bots. And there are a lot of similarities here with Leo's deck. He also plays with Fortress Scale and he also plays with Copy Artifacts. He also plays with Mishra's Factories. He also plays with uh, Switchies, a creature we haven't discussed yet. But maybe it's more interesting to look at the differences between these decks because he's playing with Discs and he's playing with Setch Trolls. So what he likes to do is just blow up the entire board and regenerate his Setch Trolls. But it also works, the, the disc also works very well with Triskelions because what you can do is you can first attack. This is an ideal situation. Let's say you have two Triskelions on the board. You first attack, deal eight damage. Then you remove uh, the counters from the Triskelions. So that's another six damage in total. So you've done 14 damage. Then you blow up your disc and everybody loses all your creatures. But you could re regenerate any Setch Trolls that you still have. Um, so it's an interesting combination to kind of combine these robot creatures with the disc. And the reason I mentioned Suchi earlier is because when Suchi uh, dies, you get four generic mana. And remember, in Swedish, there is no mana burn. So um, one of the things that Florian could do is activate his disc in a main phase and then when he has Suchis into play they get destroyed and they'll give him four mana that he can use at sorcery speed. So um, that is quite interesting um, and I'm looking forward to kind of see how that synergy works. I haven't seen that yet. So I suggest we quickly go to game number one and see how this all plays out. Game number one and Leo is looking at his hand here. He's on the left. Florian on the right. It looks like he kept his hand and I believe Leo has taken a mulligan and I see a Felwer stone there and a time walk and there's another blue card. It's hard to see. It's going to scry so that means he's gonna keep and he's gonna keep it on the top so that's a good sign at least for Florian or I mean for Leo. Florian here is starting off with an underground sea and playing a mox here. 
and there is a volcanic island. And maybe you know uh, these two players. Leo actually reached the finals of the uh, Fish Liver Oil Cup, the biggest, one of the biggest old school tournaments in the world. So, I mean, that's a, that's a very good achievement. And what do we see here? There's a mana vault and he's tapping it into a Felwar Stone. And with that mana floating from the mana vault and the Felwar Stone, he's playing a copy artifact over his Felwar Stone. And there's a second land there, a basic island from floating on. That means he can counter. Um, so let's see what Leo is going to do. It's never nice to play against an opponent with two who has two uh, blue mana open. But the same can be said from Leo. Well, no, not anymore if he taps his Felwar Stone here. Because remember, the copy artifact is a Felwar Stone. So with those two Felwar Stones, he can generate blue mana. He's playing here a Time Walk that we saw earlier in his hand, taking an extra or damage here from the Mana Vault. Going to 18 and taking an extra turn. And tapping for three. No, untapping. Untapping. He's <laughs> it's difficult playing against an opponent that has two blue mana sources open. Um, it's difficult to make decisions. And he has two cards in hand there. I believe it's an animate debt. That's one of the two. And there is a Mox Sapphire here and a Mishra's Factory from Florian. And he's actually using his four mana here to untap a mana vault. So he's kind of setting up next turn. And maybe it's his plan to play, because I believe I do see a Time Twister to play Time Twister. And we saw an attack here from Florian with the Factory. So he's down to 16. Tapping here for four mana. Playing a Suchi, so he's probably just uh, drew that Suchi, and there is the counter spell from Florian. And then we see the animate dead here from Leo, and I really like this play because, and there's the time twister. And this is this is some good magic here because Leo probably anticipated that counter spell from Florian, so he knew if my creature goes to the graveyard, he loses a counter spell, and I get to use my animate dead. And because he uses his time twister afterwards. He just gets a full hand back, so um, well done, good play. And maybe you know uh, Florian, he's recently worked together with Beasts of the Bay. It's a very interesting uh, community, old school community. They also have a YouTube channel and uh, Florian did some deck tech for the Beasts of the Bay. So if you're interested in that, I'll have a link in the comments below. Now let's quickly get back at the game here. I see that Leo played a copy artifact, I believe over the Suchi. So all of a sudden he has two 4-4 four, four creatures and there is a Suchi from Florian. And he's playing that still with the mana from his mana drain. So he still had four mana left. So he's countering a Suchi and he's playing a Suchi himself. So as we talked about before, there's a lot of similarities here between the de decks. There are three manas and there is the Setch Troll, the card that works so well uh, with the discs in the deck of Florian. And Setch Troll, three mana for a 2-2 two -two that get plus, gets plus one plus one if you have a Swamp and he does because he has a Badlands there and uh, an Underground Sea and he can also regenerate for one black. Very strong creature here. And let's see what Leo can do. He has two Suchis, and I wonder if he's going to attack with them or not. So he's playing a Mishra's Factory here. And, ooh, he's playing a Mind Twist. And this could be a turning point in the game. And Florian has to put away his entire hand here. And, and look at the cards in Leo. So I think Leo has here five or six cards. So this can really be a turning point, because it means Leo can up the pressure, and Florian only has limited resources here to deal with that. So he's attacking here with the Suchi. Um, he's doing the trade, he's willing to trade, and he's willing because he had a Triskelion in hand, and he's playing his Triskelion. Now remember, um, Leo is getting two damage here if he doesn't untap the Mana Volts. And he untaps one, goes to 13, so he does value his life total here. Maybe also because you're playing with a deck of Triskelions, the Triskelion is, can also be seen as a very, very expensive um, lightning Bolt, and here we see a um, Sage of Latinam and a Suchi, and that Sage of Latinam is actually a very interesting card, and that's probably the reason why Florian kills it. Sage of Latinam is a blue and one, and it's a 1-2 creature from the Antiquities expansion, and what it does, you can tap it to sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. So in this case, he could sacrifice his Mana Volts, not take damage, and instead draw a card. And that, of course, is very dangerous. So I think it's a good choice here from Florian, to kill the Sage of Latinam as fast as possible. And let's see what Leo is going to do here. He seems to be thinking, am I going to attack or, or not? What, um, if he attacks, what, um, 
Florian can do is animate his Mistress Factory into a factory worker, and that can help with the blocking. And remember that uh, animate dead Suchi is a 3-4, because it gets minus one and minus zero. And there's a double block with this Setch Troll and with the Triskelion. And of course, with the Trike, he can ping for one, so Leo goes to 11 here. And the Suchi is gone, but in, it's quickly replaced by a new Suchi here from Leo. So we see a lot of Suchis and a lot of Triskelions, exactly um, what I expected from this match. And I still believe that that Mind Twist, the impact of the Mind Twist will probably be decisive for this game, this first game. There's another Triskelion there, we see three counters. The first Triskelion cast by Leo. And there's a block with the Setchtro, one of the Suchis, with a double block with the Mishra's Worker. And he's probably going to kill the Mishra's Worker here. And that means three more damage here for Florian, so he's down to 14. And there's a city in a bottle. This card can be very decisive, but not in this matchup. You see that Leo only loses one city of brass. It doesn't have a big impact on this board. And I think that, you know, Florian really needed a disc just to go off and, and that's not happening. We haven't seen a single disc from Florian in this first game. And there's an attack here, a big attack, a 2-2 two -two Triskelion. A factory, 2-2 two -two factory worker, and we see the, <laughs> the camera is wobbling a little bit. Hopefully it can survive here. And we see a block, so the Mishra's factory dies, but Florian is taking so much damage. He's only on 5. I don't think he can survive this. And let's see what's going to happen. And there's a... And that's it. That's game. So the first game goes to Leo. And let's go into sideboarding. Game number 2 with uh, Florian on the play. Needs to win this to eventually win the match here at the second round. I believe both of these players won their first game. And we can kind of see that hand. He's showing it really quickly to the camera. I saw Suchi there in Mana Vault. Um, is he scrying again? So he took another mulligan. Interesting. And there is a Volcanic Island here from Florian. And again, he's opening here with the Mana Vault. What an opening! My goodness! He's playing Mistress Factory into the Mana Vault. He's also playing a Black Lotus. He's using those that six mana to play double Suchi because he plays one Suchi and then plays a copy artifact over the other. Oh man, and this is this is pressure from turn one. I, I would say, oh, and this is a nice play here, Hercules Recall. And that Hercules Recall, it's, it's a great card. I, we haven't seen it, I haven't mentioned it before. Um, it's a card that says return all artifacts to target player's hand. So you can target yourself and you can target your opponent. I think this is a great move here uh, from Florian and it's what he needed. And now he has two blue mana up, at least to counter. I don't know with how many counter spells he plays. We'll see, there's the mana drain that we saw in game number one. Taking a damage here from Leo. So a lot of things happening, playing that City of Brass and playing an Atok. Oh, interesting, we haven't seen it yet. Maybe it came from the sideboard. And here is the four mana from the mana drain available. And there is a Mind Twist. Ooh, and there was a Mind Twist in game one from Leo and now there's a Mind Twist from Florian. And Mind Twists just can be very decisive here. And there's an Animate Dead. So Florian's also playing with Animate Deads. And now all of a sudden he has um, the Suchi. There's a 3-4 Suchi facing a 1-2 Atok. And with Atok, as you probably know, you can sacrifice an artifact to give it a plus 2, plus 2. And now it's Leo who has the card Disadvantage. So in game 1 he had the card Advantage because of the Mind Twist. There's a Disc and a Maze of If. And interesting to see what Leo's going to do. I He's pretty light on land as well. Now he's got two cards in hand. Playing a Demonic Tutor, that's not too bad. That's not too bad of a top deck. And he's thinking, what card can be useful here? Maybe an, just maybe just an Ancestral Recall to kind of refill your hand, although he cannot play it straight away. But then again, he, uh, Florian already played out his Mana Drain and his Mind Twist. 
so he doesn't have to worry about those two spells. Pass his turn. It's probably going to be a recall. What he needs now is, is, is cards in hand. So Leo is still shuffling here, and it's Florian's turn. Chooses to attack here. Uh, the switch is 3-4 because of the anime debt, so he's going down to 15. And an untap here. And I must say I'm impressed how with how well Florian kind of got back into the game. <clears throat> because after that uh, start from Leo with the double switch, he turned one. I thought Florian's toast, but that Hercules recall really um, um, saved him, came at the right time. And there is a Triskelion here. Meaning that once again Leo has a Triskelion with those three plus one plus one counters that he can shoot at any moment. And the question now is, is Florian exactly? So he's going to use his disc. Oh, and this is interesting. He's playing a Hercules recall. And I believe what, what he's trying to do is play out the Hercules recall. Or actually, uh, sorry, activate the disc. And before the disc blows up itself. Because it, it destroys itself as... At the end, so it first destroys everything on the board and then it destroys the disc itself. So, as a response to the destruction of the disc itself, he's playing a recall on his own artifacts. Now, he does when he does this, it does mean that his Suchi, uh, or it's not actually his Suchi, his Leo Suchi, is destroyed and his enemy dead is destroyed, but he does have his disc back. So, this is great synergy here, and uh, maybe this is. I should definitely have included this card in the little deck tech introduction of this video because, I mean, look at how powerful that Hercules Recall is here. First, it saved him at that turn one, bought him the time to draw into that Mind Twist, get back into the game, and now um, it's kind of saving him again by getting rid of the threats of Leo. And, and look at Leo, his card, is his hand is empty-handed again. And let's see what's going to happen. There's an activation here of the factory. And boom, that land is taken care of with the strip mine. And I guess they're having some discussion, I'm not sure what that was about. And he's passing turn again. So I wonder what two cards Florian has in hand. And now the Sage of Latinam um, doesn't look as powerful anymore. It really needs artifacts on the battlefield. And there is a Suchi. So there's some pressure here from Florian. And Leo passing turn. There's an Ancestral Recall. And that is brutal. That is brutal. Even more card advantage here for Florian. And he already has pressure on the board. And he has that disc. So, attacking now, understandably, and I think he has to take the four. Go into nine, and he plays a copy artifact over his Suchi. So even more pressure on the board here. And that six mana, oh, that's a Tetravis. And I te oh, and there's a quick shatter in response. Probably came in from the sideboard. I really like the Tetravis. I like the art. And uh, that's game. Leo says, you know what? <laughs> you got this one. I'm not going to win it. That means a 1-1. One, one. And so we're going into the third and decisive game. Very exciting stuff here. And um, place your bets, ladies and gentlemen, because I have no idea who's going to win this one. I do know that Leo has advantage because he can start that game number three. So game number three is about to start. Nice box here, very relaxed atmosphere here at the Reggie Bull series in Amsterdam. And is Leo going to take a mulligan again? It looks like he's now going to keep his first seven, playing a volcanic island, passing turn to Florian. And there's an underground sea. And what's going to happen next? Oh, what an opening here. Oh, there's a mind twist. And he can do that for three because he has the Black Lotus to back him up. Oh, my. What a start. And we've actually seen mind twists in every game. And always the person that cast, that played the mind twist, um, eventually won the game. So does it mean, does this mean that Florian, sorry, does this mean that Florian is going to win the game? We'll see. But there is a, a good response, I feel, here with the Demonic Tutor. And maybe he's going to tutor into an Ancestral Recall to kind of compensate for the mind twist. Or maybe he has some other uh, big idea. Uh, Leo 
uh, knows his deck obviously very well, but he's been playing a while with it, and there is the Ancestral Recall. So drawing three cards, so there is the compensation for the Mind Twist here. And there's an Animate Dead here from Florian. It's taking a damage, she's animating those Suchis. And those Suchis just keep coming back to life, I know this. So we saw this happen, I believe, in the first and in the second game already as well. And there's a copy artifact. I believe he's copying the Suchi here. That means he has a 4-4 creature and uh, Florian Suchi is 3-4. So nice workshop here. See if he can uses it, uh, use it. Um, taking a damage here, playing a Shatter. And I believe those Shatters came in from his sideboard. And Leo's going to 17 here. Florian's on 18. And I kind of feel that that Ancestral Recall into Demonic Tutor kind of leveled up the playing field again. And there's, there's another Mind Twist. This is crazy. I mean, it's restricted, right? Just, you know, for your information. Uh, both players only play with one Mind Twist. But it, it almost feels like they're playing with a full playset. Um, so, oof, he's losing a copy artifact and a time walk. Drawing into a new copy artifact. So he does have pressure on the board here. Leo's on 14. There's a Mana Vault. And there's another Shatter. So they're shattering away. There's There are a lot of similarities here between the decks. And I, I believe that even after sideboarding, um, the amount of cards that they have similar has grown. I know that they both boarded in some Shatters here. Um, and there is a Sage of Latinam and a Suchi from Leo. So he's kind of building up his board presence. And uh, there, there it is. There you see the play sacking the Mana Vault using the ability of the Sage of Latinam. So you can draw an extra card there. Very nice. And I mean, every card matters here. And there's another Suchi attacking here. And Florian could choose to trade, and there he plays his Hercules Recall again. That does mean that he gets back his own Suchi that Florian took out of his graveyard. But I believe that um, what Florian wants to do with this Hercules Recall is, is simply buying him time to draw into something useful and get back into the game. And uh, we see Leo here casting a Suchi. Again, the one he still had in his hand, now casting the second one. And he's probably going to swing in for four. Even though he can block there with his factory, pump it up and kind of trade. And so block, 3-3, three, three, pump it, 4-4. Four, four. So that's exactly what he's going to do. But with this current board state, uh, Leo doesn't really mind uh, trading. And there is a mana drain. And there is, oh, I forgot the name of that counterspell. But uh, anyway, he's countering the mana drain with his counterspell. And that means that the Suchi can stay on the battlefield. And Florian has a 4-4. Four, four. 4-4 four, four here, and there is an attack from Leo. He's taking the damage, going to 13, playing a Triss Kellyon here. And there's a strip mine. He's going to strip the workshop. And of course, th the reasoning behind choosing the workshop, and not, for instance, the Mistress Factory, is um, that he wants to make sure that um, Florian cannot play out one of his Triss Kellyons, because he needs six mana to do so. And now he only has four. And it looks like this is going south here for Florian. I mean, he needs a little miracle to pull this off. And Leo is casting a copy artifact over Sterskelion, making Florian's problems even worse. Oh man, look at that board state. And all of a sudden, what can Florian do? So he kind of has to block here. And yeah, oh no, it looks like Leo changes his mind, doing three damage directly to Florian. So he's going down to six and plays another copy over his Triskelion. That means he has two Triskelions on the board and he can deal six damage directly. And that's game. And that went really, really fast there at the end. Uh, thank you, Leo and Florian, for the great entertainment. Beautiful decks here. Um, a lot of similarities, but the differences make it also interesting. And it was a very close match here. 2-1 uh, in the end for Leo here at round number two at the Raging Bull series in Amsterdam. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you would like to see more magic from the Raging Bull series, you can click on the video that's appearing right now on the screen or take a look on the on the YouTube channel of Timmy Talks. There you will find a playlist with all the games from the tournament. And I will be posting round number three, number four, number five, and of course the top eight matches, including the finals. So if you'd like to see more from the Raging Bull series, 
keep an eye on the channel. For now, thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. Ik het was fikker te